We have to talk about this study that came out this year. This was a study done at Lufana University in Germany by Tim Woolen and colleagues. Now the short background to this is we don't actually know what causes muscle growth or hypertrophy. We know what practically causes muscle growth, like loading the muscles and resistance training, but as to what's actually happening on a cellular level, we don't yet fully understand the main drivers. Now it's likely a combination of different things, but one of the key candidates for this is stretch-induced hypertrophy. Essentially this molecular signaling that's happening in our body when our muscle is at its most stretched position under load. So this group basically wanted to test that hypothesis to the extreme by seeing if just extreme stretching alone without any resistance training could cause muscle growth. So to do this, they recruited 81 people and they randomly assigned them to either do a normal strength training program, a static stretching program, which we'll get to in a moment, or just told them to do nothing, which is the control group. Now the resistance training program is pretty straightforward. They were doing three days a week, five to 12 repetitions per set, a pretty standard resistance training program for most people. The stretching program, however, well, they weren't doing your typical stretching. If you look at this image here, this is what they had participants do throughout the period of the study. As you can see, participants had their pec muscles stretched out as much as physically possible with these straps that were anchored by these weights, specifically for 15 minutes a day, four days a week, for the eight weeks. Now you will know if you've ever held a static stretch of a muscle, whether that be your hamstrings, you're on the floor, or any other stretch, that if you grin and bear it for a while, it eventually feels a little bit easier. But the researchers of this study wanted to make it really uncomfortable for participants. And as you can see with this graph here, whenever the force through the muscle decreased, they would retighten the machine to make sure that the stretch stayed maximal. Now at the start and at the end of the program for all participants, they measured the muscle thickness using ultrasound, and they also measured the strength of the chest muscles using an isometric method. Now, perhaps unsurprisingly, what they found was that eight weeks of strength training improved muscle thickness and muscle strength. Again, unsurprisingly, the control group who were asked to do nothing basically stayed the same. However, the group that were doing the stretching protocol also improved muscle thickness and strength. And when the researchers compared the results of the strength training group with the stretching group, there was no significant difference between the two in the improvements that they made. For example, the strength training group had a 7.25% increase in muscle thickness. The stretching group had a 6.46% increase. But when they did the statistical test to compare these two groups, they found that there was no real difference in that improvement. And when we look at the isometric strength measurements, the strength group improved by 10.3% and the stretching group improved by 10.2%. And again, there was no significant difference in the improvements between those two groups. So what can we take from this study? Well, to be honest, if you are regularly strength training, I don't think you can take an awful lot from it. As we saw earlier, the stretching protocol that they were using wasn't your average stretching protocol. They were using machinery to essentially retighten the tension on the muscles so that they could really control the degree of tension running through the muscle. Now, for most people like me and you, that sort of technology just isn't viable. Not to mention that the machine was specifically set up for the chest muscles. If you wanted to do that protocol on your whole body every day of the week, your garage gym would essentially look like a construction site. But the interesting thing about this study is that it has significant implications for the science of muscle building. It basically proves that applying a high degree of tension when the muscle is at its most stretched position, we can technically induce muscle growth without having the full concentric portion of the contraction. So now further research is needed to work out what exactly is going on in the muscle. But if you wanna take something from this research into your own training, I would say it makes a good case for full range of motion training, for really exaggerating the eccentric portion of the movement and getting right to the bottom of those lifts. Because it seems as though when your muscle is at its most stretched, that is extremely growth promoting. So hopefully you found this useful everyone. Please do go and check out the study if you're interested. I did email the authors of the study to see if they had a video of the actual contraption in use. Unfortunately they didn't have one but they did point us towards the picture that they put on the study. So if you want to get this sort of insight on a regular basis do hit subscribe and I'll see you soon in another video.